What's up, everybody? Uh, it is November 27th. We are finally through the Thanksgiving holiday. That awful, awful Sunday slate from last night is complete. And now we can move on to real basketball again. Um, big slate tonight. Four. Eight games. So that's, uh, that's perfect. I've been mostly doing these on the huge slates. But we have the, the perfect size slate tonight. Um, I've got some of the Vegas lines in here are, are you know, relatively made up. Uh, some lines haven't been released for some games, but I uh, took my best guess on some of them. It shouldn't vary too much. Um, excited to play tonight. A couple games that I'm really excited to watch, especially the Sixers and Cavs. It'll be fun. Um, and from a DFS perspective, it should be highly owned. But let's dive into this now. And um, let's take a look at everything. I'm going to start with the Pacers. Uh, 111 implied total, which is fifth. I believe this is one of the games that I made up. Yes, it is. So, subject to change slightly. It won't really move the, um, the projections around all that much, but it will, you know, change the structure of the totals. Right off the bat, though, um, taking a look, Boyan, why is he grading out so well? Needs 23 to hit 5x. Did it in two of his last six, basically three of his last six. Against the Magic. The Magic any good at shoot, uh, defending the three? I feel like they're not. My memory's garbage, so. Yeah, they're not. Oh, that's Memphis. Nope, they're really good at defending the three. Okay. Terrible at getting to the rim. I like Boyan at the start, and he's worth a look. Uh, he doesn't totally match up to what I would want to do. He does get to the rim at a pretty good rate. Um. It's small forward, so you don't have a lot of choices. I mean, small forward is always a wasteland, unless you're paying up for two big guys. And if you can get a guy that is even just like functionally average, that'll work. Um, I rarely like taking anybody in this range. It's, it's really difficult to ever find somebody that truly fits. And I think Boyan is about as close as you're going to get to something that's functional. Miles Turner's pretty interesting. Um, I just, like, his minutes are so weird. It's, you know, 31, 21, 34, 24. He's like a slightly more used Clint Capella. Theory on Clint Capella, sidebar, before we get to Houston. I feel like his minutes have been low and weird because Chris Paul is out. And I think that they're just trying to, they know where they need to be at the end of the year. They know they're not going to get a one seed over Golden State. So they were like, fuck it. Let's just not play as some people as hard. I just don't think he could like turn off Harden. He needs to go like 36 minutes a game. But I think Clint Capella, they're just like letting him chill. I came up with that thought process like 15 minutes ago, so it's probably nonsense. Um, I have Oladipo in right now. Obviously, things like Collison open up big time if Oladipo ends up being out. Same for Lance, although at 4,600, probably wouldn't want him anyway. Big price jump on FanDuel since the last time out. Anybody else look tasty here? I think Thad Young might not be getting those threes, but he takes a lot of shots in the rim and short mid range. Sometimes you need some guys in the mid section of a 
of a salary group. Thad Young at 62 is kind of interesting. I'd imagine Aaron Gordon would guard him a little bit. And that's not, like, terribly scary. So let's get off of uh, Indiana for now. You know, they got the fifth implied total. They're, they're probably going to... I'm going to have to look at them a bit more in depth later. Um, but for now, I mean, I think grabbing two guys that aren't totally broken is a good start. Off to the Magic. 103 implied total. 12th on the night out of, what, 16? Yeah. Uh, doesn't look like anything here jumps off the page. No crazy values, no injury guys. Minutes are all pretty steady. Um, I will grab the Magic Breakdown just to check it out. But it doesn't seem like a situation where I'm going to be grabbing anybody from the Magic. No new, like, real news for them. So it's hard to, it's hard to get any, anybody in fantasy when everything's steady. When prices are stabilized, when minutes are stabilized, that's when teams become not very interesting. Um, well, we got a chance to get some threes, so that might fit Fournier for once. I didn't even realize Aaron Gordon takes as many threes as he does. I wouldn't have expected him to shoot a third of his shots from three, but I think that's probably just a this year thing. Um, you know, honestly, Aaron Gordon's not in a really bad spot here. Neither is Fournier. I might like this game more than I thought I would. You know, if I'm writing Evan Fournier's name down on my short list, it must be a weird night. Because I generally think that he sucks. <laughs> so, he's 28 and a half to hit 5x. How's he been doing? I know he had a, he had a stinker recently. Back-to-back -back stinker. 17, 17, 20. Highest game was 28-6. He needs 28-5. Do. He's due. It's time for an Evan Fournier breakout game. People are going to be Googling him left and right. All right. Let's get off this and get to a real game. Sixers against the Cavs. I believe this is another line that I made up. Yep. I've got the Cavs favored by one and a half in Philly. Um, Shumpert is back. We'll touch on that for Cleveland. I have Ben Simmons in the lineup as of right now. If he's out, um, feel free to take stock in TJ McConnell again because he went absolutely ham in the last one. But for now, he's not really in play if Ben Simmons is playing. So, okay, the Cavs defense is a train wreck. We all know that. But this is going to be an interesting spot to see where you grab studs. Because you would expect Embiid to just eviscerate Cavs. Unless I'm crazy. I think Covington looks really good tonight. That doesn't shock me. But how, what do the what do the Cavs do to stop Joel Embiid? I mean, not that anybody, not that I think anybody can stop Joel Embiid. But what are the Cavs gonna do? He is going to. He's just he's way too big for Kevin Love a game where they really miss Tristan Thompson. Joel Embiid oh, is an awesome play tonight. I don't care about the mid-range crap that I'm looking at right now. 
He's going to get to the rim. He's going to be able to do whatever he wants. The only thing that stops Embiid tonight is Embiid. Um, I think Covington Embiid looks downright tasty. And you can make a case for Redick. Um, I think that's more of a GPP play. I don't expect his ownership to be super high. But he has a chance to just shoot the lights out again. Coming off a game where he knocked out like eight threes. And I'm going to take a day to see Ben Simmons. It's, it's just not, not for me right now. But Embiid and Covington for sure. That's exciting. Now I'll hop to Philly. Or we'll hop to Cleveland, rather. Uh, like I said, Shumpert's back. I've got him for 17 minutes. Not very interesting. Um, it just sort of makes the tweener guys on the Cavs less interesting, but you're really only rostering the Cavs for two guys. It, you either want Braun or you don't, or you want Kevin Love or you don't. Um... 12000 for LeBron is so expensive. He gets guarded mostly by Covington, right? Because he will eat Ben Simmons up. There's nobody else. TLC if he's playing. Might be an interesting TLC. Uh, is he too big as he? Six six. Never mind. The TLC can't guard Braun. Braun will take him to the post and just eat him for lunch. Ignore me. It's gonna be a lot of Covington. Makes me nervous for Covington for like foul trouble and shit. Um, look, LeBron's always on a short list. It'd be silly to say he's not. But twelve thousand is whew, breaking off a fifth of your payroll tonight. Now, for the same reason that I like Embiid a lot tonight, the same could be said for Kevin Love, in that if he's going to be playing on the perimeter, Embiid hates being on the perimeter. So I wonder if they would put like Embiid on Crowder and then rotate Simmons on Love. Something like that. Kevin Love match up well here? It seems like he does. At least from an offensive perspective. Yeah, they give up threes. Uh, Embiid's not going to go out deep to try to stop Love. Doing it. Kevin loves the short list. I feel like Jericho. You just made the list. Yeah, so I think that my total for this game and the line is going to be in the ballpark. And it's going to be heavily chalky with these big guys. Otherwise, you're just looking at Harden. We're not going to. You know, Boston won't be crazy. Detroit won't be crazy. Knicks and Portland shouldn't be crazy from ownership unless the Knicks have injuries again. So we're looking at Harden and Paul. Nothing from Brooklyn. Nothing from San Antonio. Nothing from Dallas. You know, the Warriors crew. If anybody's out, that's interesting. Iguodala's out. Um, nobody cares about the Kings. Nobody cares about the Clippers besides Blake. Nobody really cares about the Lakers. Nance is back, so that fucks up everything for the forwards. So... Like, Embiid and Braun's ownership should be gigantic, especially Braun, which makes me think, like, his cash, his ownership in cash is going to be really huge, so I might not, he's going to be the focus for me. Even though I don't necessarily think he's in the best spot, I think that's going to be a tough fade. 
All right, now let's chip away at some of these uh, crap games that we don't need to spend a lot of time on. I hope I sound okay. Um, still trying to get the, I got the new microphone in yesterday. Big ups to the, the Yeti Blue or the Blue Yeti or whatever order that's supposed to go in. Yeti, I got a, so I've got a Yeti microphone. I've got a Yeti uh, cup. Not the same company. Yeti's all over my desk. So really for Boston, it's Kyrie or you're using Brown, Tatum, Marcus Morris as like salary filler. Doesn't seem like a spot where I'm going to be firing up Al Horford. More of a break in case of emergency type guy than a the guy that I use on purpose. Kyrie needs 42 to hit 5x so hasn't he's only done it once in his last seven but he's had two separate 41 point games it's, it's gonna be a slow sloggy awful nonsense game i think this line's real real enough um I feel like I don't really have an idea of what the piston shooting profile is for defense. I know what they're trying to do on offense, so I assume they're trying to defend in the reverse, but let's find out. Yep. I expected. So, for guys that live in the mid range, who's going to be useful? Yeah, so I, I think Marcus Morris looks like an interesting GPP play. Um, if his minutes are creeping up, you know, he took off, he didn't play, what, Saturday, I guess? Played Friday, didn't play Saturday. I'm thinking of the right Morris, right? Marcus Morris didn't play Friday, or did play Friday, didn't play Saturday. I'm not thinking of Markeith. Brothers, I can't, uh... I think Marcus Morris looks like a really interesting GPP play. I don't have any interest really in the Celtics and cash. Done. Now, Pistons. Probably gonna be a similar scenario. There's not anything of interest here for me outside of probably Drummond. They're going to have one of the worst totals of the night. Right now they're second worst compared to Dallas. Um, so nothing really jumping off the page like that. I am going to take a look at Drummond just to see that profile. I assume it's not the best for him. Well, actually, you know, it might be decent. How many shots does Drummond get at the rim? It's got to be some sort of asinine percentage. And there's not a lot going to, you know, just looking at this so far, injury news is going to be really important because it doesn't seem like a lot of stuff is opening up. Yeah, Drummond, 76% of his shots at the rim. Celtics will let you eat from the mid-range if you want to. Reggie Jackson could be in for a decent game. But I don't want any part of them. Goodbye. Later, Pistons. Short list is pretty short so far. All right, New York Knicks. I don't think that we're going to have too much to talk about here. Um, obviously, the big news or, you know, the relevant information here is whether or not Porzingis plays and whether or not Anus Cantor plays. Um, Porzingis missed the last one. Cantor has missed the last two. I expect them both to play. Um, if they don't, you know, that's when you look into Kyle O'Quinn and, well, shit, that might be it. Because, if look, if Porzingis doesn't play, I'm going to have a really hard time rostering anybody in cash. Same scenario as Saturday night, I guess. Um, it makes the team really bad. Like, Dallas Mavericks bad. So, you can get guys... <clears throat> I don't think I muted anything, did I? Or did I mute? 
and now no one hears me. Now I'm unmuted. Well, I could probably plug in headphones to try to figure this out, but I'm not going to do that. Whatever. Anyway, if Porzingis is out, you, like, you just don't want bad guys. Like, I don't want Tim Hardaway's extra usage in a shit game. You take guys like Kyle O'Quinn going from you know, nine minutes a game to 28 minutes a game at $3,400 salary or something. You can fill in dudes with, like, value, but I don't want the guys they already have because the team is shit. They're, at, they're not going to perform the way that you want them to. If Porzingis is out, like, they'll be 10-point dogs at home. It, it just, like, yeah, that's not a team you want to back. So, goodbye, Knicks. Um, I'm only looking at Porzingis right now, and judging by the power forward group and his total, I don't think that's where I want to be. Plus his, you know, injury questions. We'll head to the Blazers. I'd like to say that it's still just Dame and CJ. But, you know, I guess Noah Vonley can be used in a GPP scenario. And then Nurkic, you know, had a 65-point game a couple nights ago. He's at 7,400. I'm assuming Nurkic would be a really interesting play if Cantor does play, given how bad uh, he is doing anything on the defensive end of the floor but I don't feel like you want Nurkic if Cantor is out weird scenario so the Knicks are just willing to give up every three you can take which makes sense because they suck so, I think this is a great spot for Dame. He might be, the like, you know, for his salary, he might be my favorite play of the night so far. Because he's going to bomb, and he's going to be able to do sort of whatever he wants because he's going to have Jared Jack on him. Jared Jack sucks. Yeah, uh, I really like Dame. He needs 45. He's been hot, right? Uh, 55 there. Maybe he hasn't been hot. So he's put up 5x twice in his last eight. Yeah. 9,000 is pretty expensive. <clears throat> but, yeah. Give me some Dame. And then for Nurkic... I think you only use Nurkic if Cantor plays, and even then, I don't super love it, but I get it. I'm going to pay very close attention to Nick's news and Blazer's news tonight, because I think Dame is going to be a linchpin for me. Then again, this is the same thing I said about Kyle Lowry a couple nights ago, and I didn't even roster him because of injury news. So, Rockets. I think this is a made-up line because half of Brooklyn's hurt. No, it's a real one. The Rockets really are 16-point favorites at home against Brooklyn. Brooklyn is just, they're just a morgue. They don't have guys left. But we need to take a look at Chris Paul. Chris Paul is projected now for me to get 31 minutes, um, 43 fantasy points in those 31 minutes. He needs 45 and a half to hit 5x, which he's done once since he's been back. But the first two games were limited minutes, and he was going pretty ham in his first one. Um, you got to be worried about blowout potential here. 
Chris Paul is obviously not going to see time in a blowout. You know, Harden will probably get a couple extra minutes, just comparatively speaking. Might be a decent shot. Man, who's going to get run for the Rockets if they smack the Nets? Bodies. How many minutes can, like, Briante Weber and Troy Williams play? This is probably like a like a sneaky good Eric Gordon game. But I don't like the minutes because of Paul being back. Price is still too inflated. I have to fade the Rockets. Yeah. The not comfortable rostering Chris Paul at 9100 in that big of a game at home like he might just play 24 minutes he'll, he'll be hella efficient but I have a hard time seeing him get to 45 and a half in a game where the line is 16 now Harden can fill it um, I don't see any reason to not look at Harden especially if like Rondé Hollis Jefferson can't play and they're, they're just removing you know, good defenders from the Nets. But I'd have a hard time picking out value guys around here. And then Capella needs 36 and a half to hit value. Um, he did it in his last one. He did it a couple nights ago. He's been in the 30s in four. He's had at least 30 in four of his last five. The only one he didn't was when he played 17 minutes. I've got him projected for 26 minutes. What is his... I've pulled this up a couple times. Uh, nobody's going to understand what they're looking at. This is all of the actuals that happen up through here. So it's up whoever it is, the date, however many minutes they played, and then their FanDuel and DraftKings scores. And what I do is uh, calculate their points per minute and do a little bit of... Uh, like a decay on those numbers so you know shit that happened in the first week of the season isn't worth as much as stuff that happened uh like yesterday so i total all of those up to get like a weighted points per minute so that i could just kind of get an idea of like how capable someone is it's so like harden based on his weighted points per minute from just this year like i just want to see sort of there's so much regression in my normal projections that I want to sort of see like the the optimist scenario if people keep playing the way they're playing. Um, <clears throat> so I you know I take a look at that as sort of a calibrator for my projections. But I want to see what Capella is at on a minutes basis. So based on the amount of minutes that I have Capella, Clint Capella projected at, which is 26, I have him project like his minutes projection would be 34.4. And his normal projection for me is 33. So I think Capella is in a, in a nice spot. I'd be surprised if I ended up with him um, just for how much I like Embiid. But you might need to pay down at center tonight to get Embiid and Braun. It might be hard to get. I'm babbling here. I'm not making any sense. If you want to roster LeBron, it might behoove you to spend down on center instead of going to Embiid to say to use that extra money elsewhere. Because LeBron at twelve thousand at FanDuel, that's a hefty chunk of your your payroll, your budget, whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's get to Brooklyn. Who, who I, I might not have much to talk about here because there's so much up in the air. And their rotations are crazy to begin with. <clears throat> um, all right, Alan Crabb didn't play last night. I, I know no one, but there was probably like 65 total viewers for the Nets game. Crabb didn't play. Rondé Hollis Jefferson sprained his ankle. I have both of them projected as in right now, which makes the Nets just useless. Um, if they're both out... Or if one or two of them are out. I guess Joe Harris comes into play. He got 37 minutes last night. 
I think Trevor Booker comes into play. And then... I don't know. That's probably it. If they're both out... If Ronnie Hollis Jefferson and Alan Crabb both sit tonight, then you need to look at Brooklyn just for uh, low-salaried value guys. If just one of them are out, you don't want any part of them. This is not gonna. They're just not good enough. You need to. We need to empty out, like you know, in this case, fifty-eight minutes from their coffer to spread around. I don't want anything else. Spurs. There's another team where we're not gonna be rostering anybody. I would imagine. Um, is this a real line? It is Spurs nine and a half point favorites against Dallas. Dallas has the worst implied total on the night. Spurs in the middle of the pack. Uh, you don't see him here because he's below the filter. Um, but I have him at I believe 17 minutes right now. Tony Parker expected to play tonight, which means that you don't want Patty Mills, you don't want Murray, you probably don't want Danny Green or Manu. Like they're all gonna give up a couple of minutes get Tony Parker back in. So, the only thing you're going to be looking at right now is, I think, Aldridge um, should do pretty well against the Mavs, if I would guess. He would fit the profile. Although he sort of lives in the mid-range. Used to. It's weird. Like, he went to the Spurs, and I just don't feel like I... I've seen him play in like two plus years. Which is weird because I watch the Spurs, but when you watch the Spurs, you're generally watching the Spurs for Kawhi. 60% in the mid range. I'm fine with taking a look at Aldridge. He's 41 and a half to hit 5x. Um, has only been there once in his last six. A couple high 30s games. You know, nothing that's going to... It's not putting you over the top, but it's not going to murder you either. Uh, 8,300 is a lot, though. There's probably better spots than Aldridge, but all of the signs point in the right direction. Mavs, I don't even think I need to click on this. Uh, Yogi Ferrell grades out really like functionally okay in my projections mostly because when guys are that low in salary and that high in minutes they kind of get there by default but I don't think his like outcome curve is the same shape it's something I really need to look into guys under 4,000 in salary that are that play regular minutes Chalmers is is similar in this case in that his raw projections are just shitty. But when he gets those big minutes at big at low salaries, he grades out really well. And I need to try to figure out why. Um, Wesley Matthews, I believe, is questionable. I still have that open. Yeah, right calf tightness. Noel is uh, questionable too, but since they don't give a shit about him, neither do I. Um, Wesley Matthews is worth a look at DK because of his position. Since he gets guard and forward, he's only at 4,000. Um, you automatically have to look at him there. But other than that, it's the worst total on the board. You don't really want anything, I guess. You know, if you like Dirk... He can he can fit in at forty three hundred on DK, um, but the Mavs are only in play on DK, as far as I'm concerned, and you don't really want to play them at all. Alrighty, so Warriors, I have them as fifteen point favorites at home against the Kings. That's for sure a made-up line. Um, if everybody's healthy, it might go to 20. Because the Kings are just terrible. 
I'm assuming everybody's playing, and if that's the case, it makes for a tricky game because, well, when I say everybody's playing, Andre Godala is out, so Caspi is sort of in play, but I don't think he's going to get enough, like, like he played 25 minutes in the past two, but that's with Durant out. It's different with Iguodala out. Um, he's just not going to get the usage, I don't believe. So right now we're looking at then Curry, Thompson, Durant, Draymond. Not that I'm uh, anybody by surprise by shouting out those four guys. So let's take a look at the Kings um, defensive profile first. It's going to be hard to get on a lot of the Warriors just because of the blowout potential. You know, they could, their big four could all play like 28 minutes because the Kings are just so bad. Okay, so they're going to give up threes in bunches. Oh my god, this game is going to be ugly. I think if I'm going to rank the I'll rank the four guys from the Warriors because they're all in play in order uh, salary agnostic so like the, the, mo the way that I th think they'll provide the most value for their dollar would be Steph Raymond, Durant, and Clay. Uh, I like Steph the most of the four. But buyer beware. This is a scary game. They're going to be high. They should be pretty highly owned. I think you'll get more early because, you, because of the lack of blowout. Um, what we really want and what wouldn't shock me especially because it's a home game i know like a bunch of these guys are actually like quote unquote questionable curry durant and draymond are all listed as questionable so i think that they're gonna sit at least one of those dudes because of who they're playing and where the game is that's not gonna really fit too much of like the resting guidelines um so it wouldn't shock me if curry sat Could be a decent game to get him a break. At which point I'd love Clay. Look, if anybody's out, you just wanna you want the guys that are still there. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. These are just awesome dudes on an awesome team that are gonna put up fantasy points. Hopefully one of them sits and it makes this decision a little bit easier. Um But they're all in a great spot, and the Kings are garbage. That's one, you, like, you have to pay attention to it. And it's possible that we don't have that news by 6.30, 6.45. Like, that might not come out until after lock. So be very careful about rostering Warriors tonight if news is not out. If I don't have, if, if there's not any news for that Warriors game by 6:30, I won't. I don't think that I'll have anybody from the Warriors in my lineup for fear of blowout and just them sitting full stop. And if I do get news from 6:30 to 7, obviously I'll, I'll amend it. But they're in play. But you gotta. There, we need news. It's one of the scarier spots in fantasy tonight if not the scariest. Now, Kings, they're scary because they're bad. Um, Zebo has been playing like the... like he just got on TRT. 47.9 fantasy points. Dude was excited about going to munch some turkey. High as a kite. Um... If you want to take guys from the Kings, you can't do it in cash, as far as I'm concerned. And But they're interesting GPP plays, because if you think they're going to get blown out, you need to pick 
whoever the hell you think is going to close the game out in an ass beating. So I would think like De'Aaron Fox probably looks okay. I would expect Buddy Heald to get run in a blowout. I wouldn't expect Zebo to get it. Uh, you know, Willie Colley Stein in a in a normal rational uh, team, you would expect all the young dudes to get the run in a blowout. They're just as likely to run out. George Hill. Garrett Temple, Zebo, Kufos, and just tell everybody to eat it. Um, don't take any Kings tonight, unless you're playing GPPs. I don't have anything else to say there. Clippers, Lakers. Battle of the Staples Center. Clippers. I believe that's a real line. It is Clippers minus six against the Lakers, which is just amazing for how bad the Clippers have been. Just tells you how bad the Lakers are. Um, so we're thinking in play here. It, to me, I don't want any part of Lou Williams now that his salary is up over seven. Uh, you can talk me into it a little bit on DK just because of the point guard shooting guard eligibility. But, you know, basically right now we're looking at our Blake and DeAndre in play. Right now I think they are, but let's find out a little bit more about their shot profile compared to the Lakers' defense. Now the Lakers are supposed to have Larry Nance back, so it's going to make decisions on that end a little bit easier. Alright, so the Lakers give up shots at the rim worse than any other team in basketball. DeAndre Jordan gets to the rim better than any other guy in basketball. How good of a rebounding team are the Lakers? All right, so DeAndre blocks shots at a good rate. Rebounding rate. Okay, this is from field goal. All right, so he should clean up there. If the Lakers are atrocious at rebounding, which I would expect them to be, at least on one end of the floor, I'm going to be firing up DeAndre tonight. Offensive rebounding rate is 16th. 20th. Look, DeAndre Jordan is set up to have a monster night. He's... He's too physically imposing against Brooke Lopez. All of the other little clowns that they have aren't going to be able to do anything. Uh, at 7,800, I love it. He needs to get to 39 for value, which is tricky. He's done it twice in his last six, but... I think I just found my center for tonight. I think I'm going to... Oh, it's so hard. If I can't make a Braun and Bede lineup work, I'm absolutely dropping to DeAndre. I love him tonight. Absolutely love him. And then for Blake, I think you can make a reasonable case for Blake as well. But at 9,700, it's not the case that I want to make. Sign me up for DeAndre. Wow, I didn't I did not expect that. I did not expect DeAndre Jordan to look as tasty as he does. He's he might be in line for one of those crazy like 14 and 24 nights. He can get a couple blocks. I don't like the change in blocks and steals. I don't think they should be three points. I think they should be two. Too, too much variance and too many points for a stat like that. Anyway, Lakers, final team. Um, as I mentioned before, Larry Nance supposed to be back. That's going to cut into Julius Randle's minutes. It's going to cut into Kyle Kuzma's minutes. You don't want any of them, um, which leaves basically Ball and Ingram as potential plays. Lopez is just hella efficient. 
that's why he grades out here. I, I, that's not a spot for me. Um, so let's take a look just to see if any of the uh, backcourt guys for the Lakers are worth it. I don't think that they're going to be. We'll see. Um, maybe Brandon Ingram. He needs 31 and a half to hit 5x. Gonna struggle to get to the rim. Oh man, you probably, you'll probably just bounce off of DeAndre Jordan. Ingram needs 31 and a half to hit 5x. He's done it. Three out of his last six. How much has his price jumped? He's at 6,300 now. Hasn't really moved. Okay. Um, I'm fine with Brandon Ingram. I don't really want any other part of this team. And that's it. That is a look at um, all eight games. It's going to be a weird night. Injuries are going to play a big part of things opening up because there's not a ton of value out there right now. But that's exciting because we're back. We've got eight games and it's going to be a real slate. Um, I will be back tonight at six o'clock um, for a live before lock. Uh, I think it's a pretty fun time for anybody that's uh, new to the channel and just listening to this for the first time. I'll go live uh, around six o'clock PM for the entire hour up until uh, lineups lock where I will hopefully already have my lineup built and make no changes to it. But if you're familiar with the live lock, you'll know that I will certainly make changes to it. News will come out and I will scramble up until 6.59 where I put in my final head to heads and may or may not get them all in. Classic. That's it. Please like the video if you can. Uh, subscribe if you're interested. I'm going to try to do these multiple times per week. Probably looking at you know, four or five um, breakdowns each morning, you know, three or four live before locks, all of the big slates for sure. Um, so lots of content coming out. Um, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, hit us up on the Reddit DFS group. Um, I post my projections there. The projections link is in the comments, but that's all I've got. I will see you all tonight at 6. Have a good day.